Hello everybody and welcome to today's Stream of Hope. I'm so glad that you're able to join us today and, and so glad that you're able to connect with us online. If you're hopping onto this video live on Facebook or YouTube, please do say hi in the comments, we'll be in there. We'd love to say hi to you. We'd love too to hear your prayer requests and your testimonies about what God is doing with you in your life at this time. So too, we'd love your feedback as well. If there are things that you've enjoyed about these streams, we'd love to know what. If there are topics that you'd like us to talk about in these streams, we'd really love to hear about them as well. So please do let us know because we want to speak directly into your situation. And so the more information you give us, the more able we are to do that just now. In a moment, I'm gonna hand over to today's special guest speaker, who's the first of a few we have this week. I'm really looking forward to what they're going to be sharing for us in just a moment. But before we do that, I want to take a moment just to remind you how you can stay connected to everything that we're doing here at Life Church. The first thing I want to mention to you is our life groups. Now, if you're in a life group, you can probably sing the praises of your life group right now into the comments of this video because they're a great way to stay connected with a group of people in this time. It's a great place to find community and it's a great place to do life together. If you're not yet in a life group, I can encourage you that you can join one today by sending us an email at office at life-church.co.uk and we'll get you connected with a really great bunch of people. Secondly, I want to remind you about these streams. They happen every day, Monday to Saturday at 11am. A great way for you to stream hope into your life and a great way for you to get your friends connected with hope as well. So I'd encourage you to share this video right now from your page or to tag some friends into the comments so that they can enjoy this video as well and have hope streamed into their life. On Sundays, we do things a little bit differently. We have our Sunday online service. That starts at 10 a.m. over on our YouTube channel with Life Kids followed by worship at 10.15. And then our message is live at 11 a.m. on YouTube and Facebook. If you haven't already done so, I'd really encourage you to get signed up and subscribe to our YouTube channel. It's the best place to enjoy a Sunday morning in a seamless fashion. So head over to our YouTube page if you're not already watching on YouTube and subscribe to our channel there. I also want to remind you about our pastoral phone line. It's a great way for you to be able to connect with one of our pastors. If you're feeling a little bit down at the moment, if there's an issue you'd like specifically to be prayed over for, or if you'd just like to have a chat to somebody different, please do give us a call. That phone line is open Monday to Friday, 12 p.m. to 2 p.m. And one of our pastors would love to speak with you. You can get in contact with us by calling us on 01522 694 694 and someone will give you a call back shortly. So without further ado, I want to hand over to today's speaker. I really hope you enjoy this message. Please stay connected with everything that we're doing at Life Church, and I hope to see you very soon. God bless. Hello to all of our Life Church family. Um, I hope you're well. Most importantly, just hope and pray that you're keeping safe during this time. Um, we really miss you um, as a family. We just miss being together with you all. And we just pray it's not too long till we're going to be back together again. And uh, for those who don't know me, my name's Tom. Um, I'm one of the Life Kids leaders um, and also a trustee at Life Church. And uh, just really honoured to be able to bring you a message this morning that I hope um, not only reassures you about the peace that God can give and the comfort that he can give but also challenges us and pushes us forward to grow into God during this time to hold on to him and to really push on and push forward in our development with God um, during this time as well I don't know about you but I found these um, messages as streams of hope um, so important to me I'm uh, for those who don't know I'm actually a, a, a bank manager I'm a, a business manager uh, for a high street bank and as you can imagine we've just been inundated with thousands of calls over these last few weeks with people worrying uh, about how they're going to pay the mortgage, put food on the table, keep their businesses going, continue to pay staff. And um, that's a lot of pressure kind of to feel on yourself when you're dealing with these conversations. And it's crucial that I give each of those people the time um, and respect that they deserve. And, and and with that pressure and with that um, that comes on you, these streams of hope messages just kind of the mid-morning has really helped to give me a bit of peace and reassurance that God is in this, that God is with me during this time and he's with us all um, and that we will come through this and I really hope and, and believe that I've been able to then pass on that peace and comfort to those people around me as well and those that have been calling in to try and support them during this period. Um, today I just want to talk about two things um, as I've mentioned firstly finding the peace 
and rest in God during this time, but secondly, persevering in God and how that's going to strengthen our character and give us a renewed hope during this period. Um, first, in reference to peace, and I find that in any period, God can really place a certain scripture uh, or, or verse of the Bible or even a whole book or Bible on your heart. And for me, recently, it just keeps coming back and back to me to Psalm 91. I'm just going to read it now to you. Psalm 91 says, He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. Surely he will save you from the foulest snare and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with his feathers and under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness will be your shield and rampart. You will not fear the terror of the night or nor the arrow that flies by day nor the pestilence that stalks in the darkness, nor the plague that destroys at midday. A thousand may fall at your side, ten thousand at your right hand, but it will not come near you. You will only observe with your eyes and see the punishment of the wicked. If you make the Most High your dwelling, even the Lord who is my refuge, then no harm will befall you. No disaster will come near your tent, for he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. They will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. You will tread upon the lion and the cobra. You will trample the great lion and the serpent. Because he loves me, says the Lord, I will rescue him. I will protect him, for he acknowledges my name. He will call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honour him. With long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. So the verse actually of this I want to focus on specifically is verse 4. However, I just want to highlight verse three, which refers to saving us from a deadly pestilence. And if you look at the definition of that in the dictionary, it refers to a fatal epidemic disease. Um, so really appropriate, obviously, during these times that we find ourselves in. But it's a reminder that he will deliver us through that. And we don't need to let it grip onto us or let fear grip onto us through this period because he is with us. In verse four, it says, which is the area I wanted to highlight on, it says it will, he will cover you with his feathers and under his wings you will find refuge. And it's funny that in the Bible, there's a lot of references to um, two birds, actually, and, and one um, specific being the eagle. And normally it's um, we're soaring high upon his wings, um, Isaiah 40, 31, um, or um, being born upon wings like eagles, for example. Um, but actually, in this case, it's more reference to um, being under his wings um, rather than upon them. Um, and that's kind of different to a lot of the message that we see throughout the rest of the Bible. The image in this is more of a sheltering wing than actually uh, a flying wing. A, a flying wing would probably kind of depict more of a um, strength and accomplishment, um, whereas the sheltering wing is definitely one of protection and familiarity if you think of uh, I'm going to give an example in a minute, but also if you think of like a, uh, a, a kind of a mother to its chicks and things like that in terms of the way that protects them. And, and just referring us here that God is protecting us under his wings at the minute, under his arms. And I don't know about you, but actually in this moment now, that's exactly where I want to be. I want to have that protection of God. I want to have that comfort and that familiarity um, of his arms exactly right now. And um, what I was going to reference to actually um, is is about penguins, which might sound a bit funny, but actually when um, I've got a real fascination with penguins myself, actually, and um, when you watch these documentaries, um, I've got a real love for, for kind of the the image when you see the um, emperor penguins looking after their, their eggs and the way that they hold them on their feet um, and keep them warm there for up to 70 days where they're being incubated. Um, and it's actually the father um, penguin that protects the, the egg for the majority of that time. And when you think of that, it literally is centimetres above the ground. And, and the reason they kind of protect them on the feet is is because if that egg touched the floor, if it touched the icy floor, within seconds that chick would die because of how cold it is. But actually throughout that time, they're holding them, sheltering them and keeping them safe, even though they're literally centimetres away from potential death. And I feel that in this case, um, there's a link there to God where it's the father penguin that does it. For us it's our father who is protecting us he is always whilst we might feel that we're just on the brink of the bottom he never lets us hit that bottom he always holds us he always perseveres us he always always keeps us just above where we might feel as the brink and he protects us and he guides us and he brings us through it at all times 
And I just feel that that can give us a real peace during this time. I feel that through Psalm 91, through that imagery, it just gives us that peace that God is protecting us and holding us during this period. So now we're reassured of our peace during this time and our rest in God. I feel that God has also been speaking about persevering and growing in him through this period. And actually, something I'm going to bring a bit later, it was confirmed by Pete, actually, in something he brought very similarly in, uh, a few days ago. And whenever that happens, um, actually, that re gives reassurance that that is a message from God and that is something that he wants to bring when he brings it through multiple people um, to church. And it's been said many times throughout this period how we want this to be a time of revival. We want to come out of this stronger to God, closer to God. We want to be on fire to God. We want to be unrecognisable to the people we were before this. When we come out of this, we just want to be part of that revival that we know and believe is going to come, not only locally, but further afield. And just to give some imagery to this, I wanted to link to um, someone that I've, I've read about recently. Um, and it's a name that you may or may not have heard of, but someone called Chuck Yeager. And Chuck Yeager was an American test pilot who actually broke the sound barrier back in October the 14th, 1947. Um, he um, was the third person, I believe, to attempt to do this. Um, uh, and the previous two, sadly, failed attempts led to the death of the pilots involved. And what having kind of the benefit of hindsight um, after after Chuck Yeager did his flight as well, um, when they've looked back and kind of seen the reasons behind it, they, they realised that in the first two, when they came at that brink of breaking the sound barrier, there was a sensation on the plane that they called fluttering. And what fluttering was, it's was kind of where the resistance was so heavy against the plane that it started to shake, it started to vibrate. And in those first two cases, the pilots, when they started to see that, um, let go of their acceleration they kind of held back and um, they felt they needed to just to back off their speed but actually that led to the plane just going out of all control and crashing to the ground and sadly killing the two pilots what chuck yeager did differently and at the time he didn't know that this was the right thing to do but what he did when that fluttering sensation happened he actually gripped tighter he pushed on he accelerated um, he held firm and that is what got him through the sound barrier and what i'm see right now the kind of the similarities between that and what we're going through now currently things are nowhere near what we expected at the start of this year there's uncertainty worry fear anxiety it's the unknown at this time and that kind of all links to that those first two pilots kind of when they were coming to that period of breaking the sound barrier it was an unknown sensation to them as it is for us but what God is calling us to do through this time, he's calling us to be different. He's calling us to go against what the instant reaction might be rather than moving away from him, which could lead to death. He's calling us to be closer to him during this time, to grip onto him, to hold tight, to hold firm in his word, to pray more to him, to worship to him, to listen to him and just spend more time with him. And it, by gripping onto him, by being closer to him, that is what's going to break our own personal sound barrier during this time. That is going to push us through and that is going to lead to changes in us that's going to benefit us and those around us when we come through this period. So what we must do, we must hold tight to him in the same way that Chuck Yeager held tight to the controls in the plane. We must do exactly the same with God right now. And the outcome of this we see actually in Romans um, and it's chapter 5 and verses 1 to 5. And this is what Pete did bring the other day, where it says, Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have gained access by faith into this grace in which we now stand. And we rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. Not only so, but we also rejoice in our sufferings, because we know that suffering produces perseverance, perseverance, character, and character hope and hope does not disappoint us because God has poured out his love into our hearts by the Holy Spirit whom he has given us now just to reaffirm suffering which we're going through now can produce perseverance perseverance through that period can produce stronger character and stronger character produces greater hope and it's clear in God's word and it's clear by the fact that I've heard this mentioned a number of times that God wants us to persevere in him. He wants to strengthen our character and he wants us to, through that, bring us renewed hope and a greater hope. And he wants to bring us out of this period closer to him. And he wants to bring us out of this a new person in him. And he wants to use us after this time, not only through this time, but after this time to be part of the revival that's surely to come, not only here, but further away, further afield as well. 
And I just want to uh, just feel and I hope that I pray that this has helped you um, today. I just um, pray that it's kind of given you a renewed hope during this period and greater peace as well. Um, that we can have this period of time to be close to God and to be sheltered by him, but also use this period to grow in him um, and to hold tight to him and, and know that through this we'll come out different people to the ones we were when we went into this. So um, I'm just going to pray in a minute, but I just want to say as well that if you've listening to this message today and you've never had the chance to um, get to know more about who, who Jesus is, and if you want to give your life to him, if you want to get to know more about what you can do, then please do get in touch with us um, through the Facebook page. There'll be details below in terms of what you can do and how you can contact us. Um, and please do get in touch if you'd like to know more and one of the team will happily get in touch. But now before I go, just want to pray for us. Um, so if you just want to pray with me now, yeah, Jesus, I just come to you now, Lord, and we just lift, um, this message to you. We lift all of our, anyone listening today, um, to you now, Jesus. And we just pray that this message has spoken to people today, has spoken to our hearts. We pray, um, that it just gives us the comfort of the, um, the peace that we can find in you, that we've got the protection of your arms, the protection of your wings, Lord, that we can shelter under them and be comforted through this period. But Lord, also that we know that through this period we can be strengthened, that we can grow, that you want us to hold tight to you, you want us to get closer to you, you want us to bring us through this period, different people to the ones that we were when we went into this. You want us to be strong in faith to you, you want us to um, pray more with you, pray Jesus that we, um, delve into your word more, we pray with you, we worship more, we listen to you more, Jesus, during this period, and that through this we will have greater character, greater perseverance, and greater hope when we come out of this, and we can really be part of the revival that we know is to come after this. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So thank you for listening today. I hope that's given you a, a little bit of comfort and peace, but also a challenge to kind of grow through this period um, with God and just to hold tight to him. Uh, we just pray you have a good day. Um, thank you for listening and we just look forward to seeing you very soon. Thank you.